and I'm sure that in a lot in a lot of what Samuel did, um, and I'm sure that they would, that there had to be a lot of self confidence for you to for you to even submit your name for this award. Mm -hmm. All right, there had to be a lot of self confidence, right? So this is just my encouragement to all of Guyanese artists and singers: have confidence in yourself, have confidence in your product. Okay, as Guyanese, we are not inferior to anybody. We are not inferior to anybody from any other territory. We appreciate them; they are friends, but we're not inferior to them. We can get awards. All right. So one of the things I like to say is that you know what we have we have a lot of you saying bold here. All right, we have a lot of you saying bold in Ghana, but I think it's just that they don't believe in themselves, right? But we have some perfect examples here of persons who believe in themselves. So that's my encouragement to all Guyanese artists. All right. So before we go on, um, I would just like to ask: Does anybody here know who Samuel Madas really is? Who, who's this Samuel Madas person? Exactly. Oh yes, he's been an award. He's your brother. Oh, so you know him. All right. <laughs> so, but who, who really is Samuel Madas? Right? Come Sam, yeah, I just collect some facts on you. Okay? You, you verify. Yes, I, I collect some facts on you, but I have to verify it because you know we got a lot of fake news going around, right? Mm -hmm. So so I gotta make sure that you know before I say that, that, that whatever I say is verified, so I have him right here. Okay? So first of all, Samuel Madas was born in Damn. Really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Samuel, Samuel Madas was born in Eiffel. Yes, I was. Yes, he was born and raised in Eiffel. All right? And Samuel Madas is actually 28 years old. Oh my God. Wow, he's only 28 and he actually achieved so much already. Samuel, how many albums have you done so far? Three and a half. You didn't three and a half? Okay. So, so that means that four. But the last one was a collaboration with, with the artist that I managed. So okay. So before I go into whatever what else I want to say, right? So I was checking through the comments on Facebook, right? Am, am I the only person that does that? Good, good. So I was checking through the comments when people were congratulating Sammy, and I saw Steve Kuban congratulating Sammy. Anyone of you guys know who Steve Kuban is? He was. I, oh my God! He, he, he was he was the I don't know if I should say the it guy or something, you know, in terms of gospel music um in the early 2000s. So when somebody like Steve Kuban could be commenting, and is he your friend? No. So but but the way he was commenting is like if he knows you, all right. But it means that that he is in touch with what with what's going on. So I think that when a legend could congratulate um, one of our artists, I mean that means that you're you're all the way up, right? <laughs> Nothing can stop you. <laughs> all right. So, so Samuel, what age did you start to sing at? Um, I think six, seven. My parents say five. They say so five? I guess they're right. Okay, because you think it's six or seven. Your parents, okay, they have to know. And did you ever win any other award other than the Marlin or other than this big award? I mean, let's start with what it is, right? It's a huge award. So did you ever win anything else other than this? Um, last year I was honored at the GM. And the music, International Music Award. Um, I don't know who the nominees were, so I can't say I won. I was just honored, <laughs> and I was given um, best male gospel artist. Best right male there. gospel artist. But this is my wow. first real, real, real award. award. Wow. Okay. So, um, who, who, who is your inspiration, Sammy? I mean, um, that that is not an obvious question because you know sometimes I might think that it's somebody else or something else, and it's not. So. Who's your inspiration? What inspires you to, to do such excellent work? Uh, well, if you're talking about what inspires my writing, who, who, I think who inspires the singing and, and the writing? There's the writing and there's the singing. Uh -huh. um, people like Eddie Neblett and wow. Bob Marley and Fred Hammond and maybe a little bit of Steve Kiran. <laughs> <laughs> And Ron Connolly. I mean, I grew up in a Christian home, okay. so and my mother, she well, she still sings, but really used to sing. And so she had all the latest music, and I would just absorb it. I live, I used to live in Eiffel, and they had two song systems in the village. So you always used to hear music from all over. You'd hear Luciano. I tell people I fell in love with music before I fell in love with Jesus. Okay. So wow. I didn't know who these guys were. You you'd hear Capitan. You'd hear. All of this music, and so there were, there were the, the the younger years. They really inspired me to really pursue music. Um, but in terms of my writing, everything inspires my writing. I just want to give people hope because I found hope in Jesus. Um, I talk to people every day, and they talk to me, and I can just hear lyrics in my head. Sometimes I wake wow. up in the morning, um, and I hear melodies in my head. Wow. So that's just me. 
it's music, I embody music. Wow. Okay, so I have um, not a question to ask, but mm -hmm. for, before I spark the questions, can you and I do a collaboration? Anyway, I'm just joking, I cannot <laughs> say to save my life. <laughs> but what I wanted to ask you, um, Tell me about the naysayers, Sammy. This is very important to me. I want to hear what the naysayers told you, what they told you you can achieve or you can't achieve. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the naysayers because every time, you, you guys notice that every time you try to do something good, every time you try to step out the box, there's always somebody telling you that you can't. All right? And some persons, they don't possess that self-confidence. So what they do is that they just quit while they're ahead. They see you trying to progress. And instead of them coming to offer you a word of support and encouragement, they come and say, no, but you think you guy going by? You're just from Eiffel. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you ever hear from anybody from Eiffel getting any awards? Sure. Congress is saying, go and teach. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you say, guy yeah, the same. Go and teach. Go and do something productive with your life. But, um, <laughs> so tell me about the naysayers. I haven't been hearing from naysayers for a long time. No, but I guess, I'm, no, no, I'm talking about the period. Explain. Yes. Um, I think you get to a point where you're so confident about what you're doing and what you want to achieve that you just stop listening to certain people. Because I think naysayers is like a frequency that you can tune up. Oh, wow. But in my younger years, I, I had people tell me, bro, don't pursue music in Guyana because nobody has done it. Everybody that ever did music, they migrated. You ain't gonna survive in Guyana. There's no space, there's no, there's no copyright. You hear all the different things that are wrong. Um, but just because something has never been So in other words, they're telling you what you can achieve. They're trying to tell you... No, they're, they're just telling me about the limitations. Uh -huh. But I, I'm thinking, not because something has never been done before means mm -hmm. it's impossible. Or not because a million people failed before means I'm the million and one and I'm going to fail. Somebody has to be the, the successful one. Mm -hmm. And so, um, even when I wanted to record, and I'm young, and I hear all these things, and you don't have the money to do it. You know, because music really takes money. Especially when you want to bring out what you hear in your head in the orchestra and the live music. But um, even though a lot of people were telling me, why, just relax. Do music as, I've had people tell me, do music as like a pastime. Go on, go on, teach me like this. And go on, teach her, learn a trade or something like that. But I had people who believed in me. I had people who used to say, hey, I like what you're doing, hold this money, here. go and record this. Oh. I mean, and they poured into my life. So as much as I would like to talk about the negativity, I, I can't help but talking about the good people that saw potential even before the seed became a tree to say, no, that's something good, let me pour into it. And so I've had a lot of people along the way just encouraging me, even if they didn't have money to give me, say, yo, bro, there's a sound inside of you, you're going to read very far. Don't stop. Don't let nobody tell you any negative thing. And I guess that, that's what pushed me, really, wow. to keep doing music. Wow, that, 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 that's amazing. I mean, it, it's just amazing what a simple word of encouragement can do. Yeah, because a lot. They, they might not have had the money to say, well, Samuel, look, it's 15,000, go record this track. But the fact that they express their, oh, 50. <laughs> Oops, 50. <laughs> <laughs> 50. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you know, but the, the, the simple fact that they would have said to you, look, I believe in you. I know you can do this. Mm -hmm. That kept you in the game. So, uh, again, my, my message to persons, you know, let's encourage each other. All right? Let's, you know, whenever we, whenever we spot young talent, don't, don't, don't let's try to tell them, well, um, you know, you can't achieve this or you can't achieve that. All right? Now, I know that there is something called starving artist syndrome. And so sometimes, everybody knows about starving artist syndrome? Like where you, okay, you actually believe so much in your talent and you pursue it, but the first few years might be the most brutal years. And so you believe so much in it, you spend so much time on it, but, and, you, and you don't actually consider, well, you know what? Um, I actually need to eat and I need to pay a bill, so I need something to hold me down. Um, I know that, that there is that, and I don't really encourage that, right? Except the person is, is some person of, of absolute radical faith. Mm -hmm. but, at, but at the same time, you know, even if you want to have a full-time job to support you with paying your bills and, stu and, and stuff like that, whereas I see that as very important, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I still think that persons should not give up on their dreams. Even if you say to yourself, look, Yes, I got this mortgage, I got this rent, I got everything to pay, but I believe in myself, I believe that I could be a singer and all these things. Well, I would encourage person, you know what, work, work in the day and pursue your dreams at night. Don't work in the day and go and sleep at night. Pursue your dreams. There's, um, there, there's actually a proverb, and I think you put, I think you're the person who puts it up sometimes, that great, 
Great men did not achieve great heights by sudden flight, mm -hmm. but while their companions slept, they were toiling onward throughout the night. All right? So, whereas I don't really support starving artist syndrome, I'm saying just don't give up on your dreams. All right, because I have dreams as well too. I have I have a lot of dreams, but of course, you know, bills gotta pay, the car gotta pay for, you know, the children gotta go to school, you know, and all of those things. But you know, it's it's so important that you know when you knock off from your nine to five, go and use those hours to pursue your dreams. And I did it. All right, too. go and use the hours to pursue your dreams. Don't just say, "Lord, I gotta walk and forget about this dream." Mm -hmm. Still pursue the dream. Pursue the dream because you never know when that big break is gonna come. And I think persons like Kester could really attest to that because Kester has been in this business like forever. All right. I remember Sammy putting up a post um, a day that when um, you know that when you that when he met Kester, that, oh my God, it was like a really really yeah. big deal because Kester was at one point he was the only person really pushing this local. And not, I don't even want to say gospel music, but I think even local music to begin with. He was one of the persons really really pushing this local music in Guyana. All right, and I remember those were the days of Kessel was severely, um, severely ostracized because he used to use bad tracks. Because mm -hmm. I think in those days, people were not actually building tracks. So he used to gotta use bad from those other songs and he used to be ostracized, you know? But um, one thing I would like to encourage us as well too, let's not, let's not ostracize and criticize people for what we don't understand, es especially in the kingdom. Let's not do that, all right? I think that we should just join support. If, if we see Kestis using back other people, um, but you, you guys with me? You guys with me? If we see, if we see Kestis using back other person's um, traps and so on, we, instead of saying, what he doing? Is we think at all? You know, what we should do is say, Kester, how can I help? Okay, so let's keep a barbecue to help towards doing this um building these traps or build a track and give him. Alright? So it, it doesn't make sense we sit on the sideline and we just tearing people down. Remember now what we saw is what we reap, right? And I think that, that that's a lot of God put in the universe. So even as I pour into Kester, as I pour into Samuel, believe me, somebody's gonna pour into me for my dreams to come true. Alright? Now it might not be my time as yet. I, I probably didn't shine as yet, but it don't mean I can't help Sean to shine. Yeah. It don't mean I can't help Kessa to shine. It doesn't right. mean I can't help Princess Vanessa to shine. Some, one of these days, it's going to be my time. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else is going to help me to shine. But remember, it all depends on the seeds I sow. Can the church say amen? Now let's collect an offering. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I think you guys understand what I'm saying. Collect right? offering. So, <laughs> all right. so, Sammy, I want to know who is your biggest support for Sammy? And I mean, you know, when, when, when you say friends, um, you better call Melissa name, she's standing right there. Good. So you can say Melissa and friends, right? But um, who are your biggest supporters? My biggest supporters are my family. And I got to define family. Okay, yes, um, please do. Well, my parents and my siblings. I think everybody, some people come up to me at different points in time. Oh my God, I'm your biggest fan. I think my, my youngest brother is my biggest fan because he copies everything I do. Wow. He knows I'm a music to oh, the T. Wow. And he's the one that can't sing to save his life. Wow. Me and him could do a collab. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, my family and my wife, she's been supportive. Wow. Like all the late nights, especially this last album. <laughs> There's a lot of putting up, a lot of late yeah. nights coming home. But then I have a larger family. Some of them are here, like Christina and yes. and Melissa Van Diar. And my, my and guitarist, he left, and the young man at the back there with the green hat, that is the engineer for all the Oh, wow. And what's his name? His name is Vijay. Vijay. Okay, Vijay. Vijay. Hi, Vijay. <laughs> so, this, this is the support team. I mean, I had to dedicate their work to them because yeah. the, the, the recording, the, the background vocals, the instrumentation, they're the people behind it. So, I got it in my head, but I can't do everything, and these are the people who support me. Um, these are my biggest support. Wow. So at this point, I just want um, Kessa to just come for just a, a brief moment. Kessa, I just wanted you to you to tell us, um, you know, where you actually. I mean, in light of what you've experienced, in light of what you see happening with Sammy right now, getting this international award, and we got to stress this is an international award. Um, where do you see gospel music right now in Guyana? And I want you to be brutal about it, brutally honest. Where do you see it? All right, no, no, no. I'll take back those words. All right. I know, I know, I know. But I, I just want you to tell us where you see gospel music in Guyana. Maybe, maybe it could be a case where, you know what, gospel artists are not getting support, or, or even not only gospel artists, because although Samuel is a gospel artist, Samuel is a Guyanese artist. So tell us about Guyanese artists. Where do you see us right now? 
All right, thank you very much, Melissa. Uh, what will we really need to get me? Thank you and the team. Sammy, congratulations on your award. Yeah, thanks for bringing it home for Guyana. Yeah, yeah man, you don't know. No. Uh, respect to each and every person, all the artists, whether you get an award or not, you know what I mean. Um, in, in the eyes of God, you don't know, you're special. Each and every one of us would not have an award, but um, from you tell somebody about Jesus, there goes your award. <laughs> you, you get your reward, so that is sure. So let's celebrate with the brother. And to answer your question, um, Guyanese music is there, you know. Just that we don't have the support base like, you know, the Americans would have. These people go all out for their people. Rather than in here, when we do our stuff, you know, we get these pockets of people who would say, you know, I will support him, I don't like him, I will support. So who don't like you, whether, you know, or not? That's it. But in, in terms of the music, the music is up there. There's no question about it. And I must say the media is here. And I want to put this point too. We need a gospel radio station, a 24 hours gospel radio station. Whereas gospel music can be played 24 hours and Guyanese gospel artists can get a rightful place of people hearing all the different music. I mean, I got me radio pro, but there's so much I could do and no more. Because they get, they get, people will tell you, well, you can't play our guy in this music, you know, you can't mix it. So what? And you know, sometimes you play it because they don't even know this guy in music unless I say, well, you know, this is also. So, 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 yeah, so there you go. But you know, we need our gospel radio station. Guyanese music is up there. Yeah, it's way up there. Up there, compared to some of the fire music you hear. Oh, come on, man. We up there. You see, man. So, Guyanese, keep doing what you're doing. We're doing great, y'all. And um, the radio station, then we kick it more so that the music could bang 24 hours yes. a day. And you're not gonna wait till, you know, Felice or Stan on like the four or when can three go on or whatever the case is. And let us respect ourselves. Let us support each other from the heart in action, in action, in action. The listeners are saying in action. Sometimes we support with our mouth, but our actions speak differently. So let us support each other in our actions and not only our words. So Sammy once again, congrats. And uh, I think Sean will be the next one bringing that shake yeah. the chains out, shake it chains out. <laughs> Yeah, but so, uh, that's, so for those of you, for those of you, yes, okay. thank you, yes. For those of you who don't know, Sean, Sean was actually once one of the the, the first, the, the first um, GTT jingle and song competition winner. First, 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 first male. male. Oh, okay, first male. Second. Okay, that's for me, Wilson. First male. That's questions to ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know um, Pastor Kwame, he's actually the pastor of Cainville Full Gospel Church and um, he does a lot, of, um, a lot of social outreaches. He has a team called Riot, which is Righteous Invasion of Truth. And so he deals with a lot of um, gospel art artists and he deals with a lot, of a lot of local and international gospel artists. And so I would like you to tell me, is there any difference between our local and and the foreign gospel artists? No, well, first of all, so good morning, everybody. Good morning, Melissa. All right, team, guess my gadget family, all the generals, guests in the house. Congratulations to Sami. Thank you. Um, on winning this award, it means a lot to Ghana. To answer your question, no. I don't believe there's any difference. I just believe. Also, oh, so there is so, so, no. so you're trying to say that they they want to be better. Which camera? There's no, no difference. I need this the one question one is, the question is, if there's any difference, there's no difference. Where's the camera? No. There's no difference between the local guys and, and the international foreign. guys. The only problem is that Guyanese, no disrespect to us, but I think we're too foreign-minded. The same thing that we go all out, and you know, we do. Mm -hmm. We go all out, we support the international guys. We need to do the same for our, for our very own. Boy. I believe our Sammy said it, and I saw it online also. It said that, you know, many times these countries, Trinidad, all these other countries, they don't do stuff to take Guyana over. And it's time for them to, if they can't do it, we need to do it. Yeah. We need to create opportunities in Trinidad and all these other countries, Jamaica, all these countries, so that our Guyanese guys can go there and they can see that we have the same same um, talent, same grace, same anointing that they have. It's just that they have uh, better resources or they have access to better resources than we do. I believe that Guyana is on par with the entire Caribbean and the entire world. Yeah. All right? Give us the resources and you will save Melissa. Yeah. Wow. Lord. Well said. Well Lord. said. That was absolutely well said. So they're, 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 there's no difference. Their quality is not better than us, but it's just that they're more supportive. That's than right, us. right. Have more resources right? at this time than we yes. have. So if we get access, and I'm asking the government, I believe I'm grateful what this company is doing, but I believe the entire Guyana needs to support Samuel with us at this time. He should, we should get some award, some special award. How because he's land, for it. He what should get something land? special. He yeah, should be land. honored, as well as the others. I'm saying, as Kessie said, I support. We need a gospel station, and that we can be able to 
put, you know, put the music 24 hours, um, seven days a week, all right? And if, if they may say that, you know, Christian is, um, gospel station is too much, uh, give us a religious station that, so that, you know, we can work things out, you know, but so we can be able to push it, all right? But again, this man, this man needs to be honored. It's the first, it's a big thing. This yeah. is a big yeah, thing. As, the this, as I write, I realize it's a big thing, Guyana. President, big government, big opposition, it's a big, big thing. This young man should be honored. Yeah. All musicians in our country should be honored. And let's do some more stuff, offer more resources so that they can get the opportunity to be in the same yeah. playing field as everybody else. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Show me some love. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thank you. Thank you. So at this at this point in time, I would really like to say, um, before I ask Sammy to sing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, yes, I mean, I, I'd asked him in advance, like a second in advance, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so at this point in time, I really must, um, I really must give recognition to Mr. and Mrs. Mangar, the owner of Glamour, I Ride Shoe Heaven, and Gizmos and Gadgets. Um, soon as I told them that, you know what, Samuel Medas won an award, um, they were, I mean, they, they just jumped on board immediately because their approach is a community approach. They care about what goes on in the community. All right, so Gizmos and Gadgets family, which includes all these companies, um, I can assure you, and I would love for this to go on record, we are not the kind of company that just sells from behind the counter. We want to be involved in the community. So if the community is doing something to better the community and to better persons' lives and to better Guyana, we will jump on board. All right, now we will provide sponsorship. And when I say we will provide sponsorship, sponsorship doesn't only come in the form of money. We have a lot of persons here who are experts in many fields. All right, so let's say you need a PR person, you can call upon us. We will give you that service for free. We will give you our office to use for free. All right. Yes. So we want to we want to support the community in whatever way we can because it doesn't make. I mean, we have a beautiful facility. We have a beautiful facility here, and even upstairs we have a lovely conference room. So anything that's going on in the community, and you know, you need a conference room or whatever, just come to us, talk to us. Let's see how we can help. Like I said, sponsorship doesn't only come in the form of money. We have a lot of experts here. We have a beautiful facility. We have a roof garden and all of that. And we want to work with the community. We believe in the, in the community, and that's our approach. We don't. Want to go far? We don't want to continue. Listen, we don't. We don't believe that that we would that that. Okay, we believe that whatever solution or whatever method we had of doing things in 2016, that that will remain in 2016. Mm -hmm. We believe that in 2017, you have to step up. You have to get better. You have to become more innovative. And our 2017 approach is a community approach. All right. So um, I, I would I would just like that to be on record. All right. <laughs>